8, 2020 vote, the race for state auditor. Good morning and welcome to this week's special edition of Face the State on the Montana Television Network. I'm Mike Dennison, MTN's chief political reporter. We're continuing our series of holding debates for, uh, for uh, holding debates for people running for a statewide office. Today, we're bringing you the two candidates, the two major party candidates running for state auditor, also known as uh, Commissioner of Securities and Insurance. Uh, this person regulates the investment and insurance industries in Montana. We have two candidates running for this office with us this morning. We have Republican Troy Downing and Democrat Shane Marjo. Troy Downing is a businessman, entrepreneur, and combat veteran from Bozeman with experience running companies in both the insurance and securities industries. He was one of four Republicans who ran for the U.S. Senate in Montana's 2018 election. Shane Marjo grew up in Moronan, Montana, is a member of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes. He's a graduate of the University of Montana Law School and has worked as a criminal prosecutor. He's also a two-term representative from Missoula and a pilot and former wildland firefighter and raft guide. Gentlemen, welcome to the show this morning. Thank you for joining us for this debate. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks for having me. And uh, our format this morning, just uh, so our viewers know, we're asking questions of each candidate. They'll get one minute to answer. The other candidate will have 30 seconds to rebut. And also in the middle of the debate, we'll have the uh, candidates asking each other a question. And each candidate will have about a 90 second close at the end of our program. The first question goes to Mr. Downing. Uh, Mr. Downing, you've spent your career uh, in various types of business development, including a, a technology startup. How does that experience qualify you to be the, our state auditor? Well, thank you, Mike. And first, I just want to say thank you for doing this. Thanks to MTN. Uh, thanks, Shane, for being here. And I, I'm glad you recovered from that uh, mountain biking accident. Uh, I look forward to riding again. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm still faster. But uh, to answer your question, uh, Mike, I, I think it's important that you have wide, uh, broad business experience. I think understanding, you know, the pitfalls, the issues that you have running a company. I think that, uh, you know, obviously, you know, my business background goes from technology to venture capital to securities uh, uh, to uh, uh, wholesaling um, uh, securities uh, issues to uh building insurance companies, uh, you know, pretty, pretty broad basis. And I think really to develop best practices in, in anything, it, broad experience is important. And I understand the pitfalls that you have building companies. I understand what it's like to uh, work in heavily regulated and, co and complex industries. And I think it all comes to bear in, in this office that I'm running for. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Morjo, your rebuttal if you choose. Thanks, Mike. You know, one of the things that I actually pride myself on is, is the fact that I don't come from industry. Um, I'm in this job to, to step up and help people. I grew up here in, in Montana, in our community. Um, I know what people are experiencing across the state because um, I've lived it. And um, I, I, I believe I have a strong background. I can step into this office with my background as an attorney, um, my background in prosecution, by taking on fraud cases personally myself. I will commit to doing that. Um, and my experience in the legislature. Uh, Mr. Morgeau, let, let's continue down that path just a little bit with my question to you. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, that, you're an, that you're a lawyer and you also mentioned that you've been in the state legislature. I'm just wondering uh, what in your legal career or your legislative career uh, prepares you to be a state auditor, which is a you know, regulator of insurance and uh, the investment industries. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, I feel like a lot of things qualify me in my career to, to step in and do good work for this office. Um, first off, you know, you mentioned my, my legislative work. You know, I, I've been a legislator. I worked in the legislature for over two terms. I worked on issues when we have tight budgets. Um, I've been in, uh, personally involved in those types of issues. I've worked on legislation, uh, bipartisan legislation, where I've worked across the aisle, and I've been able to find common ground on common sense issues in the legislature. I'm proud of my record there. Um, we stepped up and we did a, a package of bills last session to uh, protect uh, victims of child sex abuse. But I've also worked on a lot of issues that have actually directly lowered insurance rates in Montana. Um, in the legislature, we worked on the reinsurance program, um, worked on Medicaid expansion, which got around 100,000 people in Montana insured, dropping the rate from around 20% to around 6%, 7% in Montana. Um, I'm proud of the fact that 
I've been able to put partisanship aside in the legislature and to get things done. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Downing, your rebuttal. Well, first of all, you know, bad actors are bad for business. And first and foremost, this is a consumer protection agency. I think that the most important thing for somebody sitting in this office is having some industry exposure where you see how bad actors can do bad things to Montana consumers and protect them. And again, the industry, they want us going after bad actors as well. They want us to know where to look. So what I look at this in this office, first and foremost, consumer protection. Second thing is just getting the regulatory code more friendly for businesses doing business in Montana. Thank you. Uh, the next question goes to Mr. Downing. Uh, Mr. Downing, you know, the current State Auditor Matt Rosendale, a Republican, has been very critical of the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, and he's offered a lot of alternatives to that, such as uh, health care sharing ministries, uh, direct primary care, and uh, options for shorter-term uh, bare-bones health insurance policies. I'm wondering if you share his views and if you would continue down that path of your elected state auditor. Well, first and foremost, I, I think it's good to have a lot of tools in the toolbox. And, uh, you know, we've all seen the, the skyrocketing costs of health insurance. And I think that's directly correlated to the skyrocketing costs of health care. But the way that I look at this, I really want to see a, a strong educational component in the auditor's office. And if you have lots of choices, direct primary care is a choice, health care sharing ministries are a choice, uh, uh, association programs, you have all these choices. I want to have, I think it's fundamentally American to have choices. And if we can produce materials so that a layperson will understand what they're getting, what they're giving up, what the risks are, what the rewards are, and really understand what the difference is between all these different tools in the toolbox, they can decide for themselves, for their business, for their families, what tool is best for them and how they can solve the problems of making sure that they have adequate health care coverage. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Marjo, would you like to rebut that answer? Yeah, you know, going up here in Montana, um, firsthand, I, I, I've experienced I grew up in a low-income family, the need for affordable health insurance. I grew up in a community where a lot of people struggle to afford health insurance. And that's one of the reasons I'm in this race is to find ways to get people insured and get people affordable insurance. Um, to me, that, that means options, uh, but that also means protecting people with pre-existing conditions, not bringing forward junk insurance scams, not bringing forward health sharing scams. If you're gonna do ins uh, sell insurance in here, you need to play by the rules. Um Along those same lines, my next question to you, Mr. Morjo, um, in, in, the, in, the, in the economic fallout from the uh, current pandemic, uh, I think we can say that there's probably a lot of Montanans who have uh, lost their health coverage uh, by losing their jobs or, or whatever ec economic means may have beset them. If you're the state auditor, what are you going to do to address that problem? Thanks, Mike. Look, we're in a crisis in, in Montana across the country and you no, know, really, uh, I see this, this issue as, as twofold. How can we help business in Montana um, during, during a pandemic and during a crisis? Uh, first off, you know, one of the issues that I continue to hear uh, from businesses and a lot, of, a lot of my friends from growing up in the state and talking to them over the years um, and seeing their businesses grow, having those conversations with them during a time where they've had business interruptions, um, looking at the landscape of business interruption and insurance and figuring out how we can sit down with insurance companies and businesses to make the laws more clear on that front for them. Uh, second of all, um, we're, we need to step up uh, and, and support people in our communities. We, we know that during times of crisis, you see more predators um, and you see people trying to prey on folks across the state. I know what that means. I have experience in prosecuting uh, those issues um, in, in my former uh, legal work. I'm ready to get to work at the, uh, at the state auditor's office to step up and protect people in that capacity. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Downing, would you like to um, answer that or rebut that in some way? Well, first of all, just on the uh, pandemic, uh, you know, obviously a lot of businesses have been hurt 
And, uh, you know, Heather and I were involved in producing a tremendous amount of hand sanitizer, literally millions of bottles that, that we use to help communities that were particularly hurt. Uh, but, you know, some of the issues going back to the education part of what I want to see in this office is, as Shane uh, briefly mentioned, you know, the business interruption. A lot of people didn't understand that they weren't covered. And so understanding what you're buying, what you're not, and what the true cost is of the risk that you're trying to purchase. Uh, that's a big issue that I want to solve in this in this office. Thank you. Um, now we've got to the, we've come to the part of the debate where the uh, the candidates are going to ask a question of each other, and the first question goes from Mr. Morjo to Mr. Downing. So have at it, Shane. <laughs> All right. Well, you know this this question uh, is going to be pretty direct, um, and I know it's a, a, a discussion that comes up a lot um, in my conversations with folks across the state, Troy. And I, I feel it's important to give you a chance to, to talk about this today. Um, you know, I believe Montanans deserve an elected official um, in Montana that they can trust. Um, I believe you lied about your California residency to obtain a cheaper hunting license, and you violated Montana campaign finance laws, uh, I believe seven times just a few weeks ago. So my question is, how can Montanans trust you to hold the insurance and securities industries accountable um, when you can't hold yourself accountable in these areas? Well, the first part, well, thanks for asking that question. The first part of that uh, on the hunting, I've spent my entire life advocating for conservation, uh, for hunting access, for hunting issues, for outdoors access. I've spent, you know, uh, many, many hundreds of hours volunteering, uh, uh, sponsoring wounded veterans coming to Montana to use fly fishing as therapy. It's been a, a tremendous part of my life. And I think that when I was hit on this, the only thing that really got to me was they were holding me to a standard that was not reasonable, I believe, for, for any Montanan. And basically it came down to you can't cross a border without resetting a clock, which I thought was unreasonable. This is where I pay taxes. This is where my driver's license is. I, I've made Montana home for the better of 22 years. And obviously I've traveled a lot. I enlisted in the military after September 11th. I've been stationed in Albuquerque and Spokane all over the world. So the one thing that came up was they were upset that I was bringing veterans to Montana to fish on our rivers. And I'll wear that proudly on my shoulder anytime. Thank you, Mr. Downing. Mr. Uh, Mr. Morzo, would you like to uh, answer that answer that answer or comment on that answer? Yeah, I, you know, I for me, it's it's, it's a pretty direct uh, question, um, but it's also concerning uh, to me that you know, in Montana, I think I can admit when I've made a mistake. I think people expect us to admit when we've made a mistake. Um, I think that's a value in the state, um, and I believe Montanans value honesty and integrity, and um, I think we expect that the person being tasked with regulating companies um, adheres to that level to ensure that um, they're adhering to, to honest and, and integrity business practices in the state of Montana. Thank you. Now, Mr. Downing, it's your chance to ask a question of Mr. Morjo. Okay, Shane. Uh, first of all, you know, I've got broad business experience like we've uh, talked about. I've signed the front of a check. I've also got experience in very complicated, highly regulated industries, uh, not just uh, insurance, but in the securities business and, and other highly regulated industries. And I understand the pain of trying to make a business work. I also understand how businesses can take advantage of the unsuspecting because I've done that work. That's something I've been doing most of my life. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you seem like a great guy, I actually personally really like you, but you started out as a lobbyist. Uh, you're a lawyer, you're a legislator. You've never signed the front of a check. You've never run a business. You have no experience directly in insurance or securities. So how do you expect to even learn to know what you don't know? Yeah, thanks for the question. And, and I, I, you know, I believe, um, well, first off, I'm proud of the fact that I don't come from industry because you'll know that I'm going to put people first in Montana. Um, I'm going to step up um, and do the work I've done and working bipartisan across the aisle, um, finding common sense on uh, common ground on common sense issues, such as I did in the legislature. I think I have a, a record of showing that I can get things done, that I can personally work on issues um, that lower insurance rates in Montana. Um, I'm a citizen legislator. I've been a legislator for about as long as Mr. Downing has been, been campaigning, actually. Um, and so, you know, in my work in, 
as a citizen legislator in California, it's, you know, a year round job here. It's people from our communities all across the state of Montana, Republicans and Democrats coming together to work at the legislature. And my legal background is something that I think is really a strong uh, trait for this job um, because I know nuances in law and I've been able to navigate that and I can bring that to the, to this job as well. Um, Mr. Da Mr. Downing, um, what's your reply to that uh, statement from Mr. Marjo? Well, I'm not sure you directly answered the question. One of the issues that I have in dealing with complicated, highly regulated industries, whether, you know, obviously you're proud that you didn't come from industry, but I'm worried that you don't know what you don't know. You've never signed the front of a check. You've never worked in a highly regulated industry like that. And I think it's important that you have somebody that's not beholden to industry, but at least understands you know, where everything's hidden, what can go wrong, and how a heavy-handed regulator can get in the way of business when it's not actually protecting consumers. I think that's tremendously important. Thank you. Uh, the next question uh, goes to Mr. Downing. Uh, Mr. Downing, you, you've said often, you've said it today as well, uh, that uh, the problem with healthcare in Montana is that it's too costly. Uh, what a state auditor will you do to address that problem? Well, one of the things that uh, I want to do is I want to start uh, pushing uh, um, transparency, transparency in all things government. I think if people understand where their money's going, they understand the, you know, 30 plus percent of their you know, money going into, uh, into pharmacy benefit managers. I know there's been legislation pushing for transparency in the past. I, I believe that there's some, some flaws, but uh, I think pushing for transparency in hospital billing practice is important. Pushing for transparency in pharmacy benefit managers is important. I think that uh, just getting back to a provider patient relationship that we, we seem to have lost in the modern world. You know, I grew up in a poor family. My mom was a checker in a grocery store. When I was a little kid, she would take me to the doctor if I had an issue and we walked out, she'd get out her checkbook and write a check because that doctor had a relationship with my mother and was priced for that community. And I think that there's a lot of tools out there that can get us back to that issue of that actual direct patient provider relationship. Thank you. Um, Mr. Morzo, what do you think of that answer and, uh, and this problem of uh, addressing the cost of healthcare in Montana? Yeah, you know, uh, growing up in, in my community, um, I've seen firsthand the need for folks to have access to more affordable products in, in, the, in the state of Montana. Um, I think competition, bringing more competition in uh, to bring uh, prices down is one way. Uh, transparency is another way, and I'll take it one more level. Um, I'll bring a package of bills uh, to bring transparency uh, to cost and insurance. If you can go into the grocery store and you can look at the prices of bread and bologna and all those sorts of things, you should be able to go to the doctor and, and know what you're gonna be on the hook for as well. Thank you. Uh, the next question goes to uh, Mr. Morjo. Uh, Mr. Morjo, as you know, uh, the state auditor sits, is one of five offices that sits on the state land board, uh, making decisions about land policy and the ownership of the state land and the school trust lands. and. Uh, Part of his duty is to manage these lands to uh, maximize income and return on the value of those lands and that trust. How should we, we best do that as a state? Uh, any, any changes you would suggest in, in how those lands are managed to, for that goal? Thanks, Mike. You know, public lands are, are critically important to me. You know, I, I, I grew up in a family where, you know, um, hunting and fishing is, is how we survived. You know, we, it was sustenance and subsistence for us. Um, I also grew up as a product of our public school system, so I know how important our state lands are for, for school trust beneficiaries. And I know how important they also are for living and growing up with farm um, agriculture and, and crops around me. I know how important it is to uh, landowners and, and those industries in the state of Montana. And I know that we need to balance all of those um, to ensure that we're supporting all of Montana. But the first and foremost thing I want to adhere to is the constitutional mandate to raise funds for our school trust uh, beneficiaries. That's number one. Uh, number two is finding a way to balance all of those pro approaches with um, you know, grazing, logging, um, all of uh, the, the other industries and agriculture, farmers and ranchers, uh, to do everything we can to support them and our outdoor recreation economy um, and outdoors men and women across the state. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Downing, what's, uh, what are your views on, on Mr. Uh, Mr. Mojo's answer and, and the land board as well? 
Well, first of all, I'm glad that he's finally given a comprehensive answer. It's always been just about a one issue thing of uh, access to public lands, which we all care about. That all hits us, you know, uh, straight in the chest. But uh, yes, I, I, I believe in multiple use and sustained yield. Those, those lands were set aside to fund public education. So multiple use means multiple use, not my use, your use. Let's look at it. What, what do we need to preserve? Where are access issues important? Where can we log? Where can we graze? Where can we uh, work with industry to really float, you know, the backbone of the Montana economy. And the second thing is sustained yield. Let's do it in a way that we don't deplete the assets and we can do it forever. Thank you. Um, I'm going to shift gears a little bit here. Uh, Mr. Downing, this question goes to you. Just, just last week, we had some uh, um, somewhat national state news breaking about uh, the Republican Party and the Trump administration filing suit here in Montana to block all mail ballots, which have been allowed by the governor and chosen by county election officials. I'm wondering, as, as you as a Republican candidate, are, are you supportive of this effort to stop all mail ballots in Montana? Well, this is, uh, thanks for that question. This has been an interesting topic that's been going on. And uh, I look at what we saw with just record turnout in our primary here, uh, which was interesting. But I also hear the concerns. You know, I think, well, some of it is just about, you know, traditional. We've for, you know, a couple of hundred years been walking into our polling place and, and, and voting for the candidates we supported. And, uh, you know, taking that away is obviously a big concern. I think there's, uh, there's some issues that people have raised about uh, ballot harvesting, about uh, there being, you know, uh, issues of it not being fair or complete, just uh, sending ballots to everybody that's registered. Um, but I'm all for having a true democratic vote where everybody, you know, has the chance to cast their ballot for what or whom they, they support. I think that we need to look at this very closely and figure out ways that we can prevent uh, any kind of fraud, prevent it from being misused. But, you know, in Montana, I think we're already uh, pretty highly uh, mail-in voters already, but I, I do think we need to look closely and make sure that there's no fraud. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Morjo, uh, what do you think of uh, Mr. Downing's response and also this effort to uh, stop all mail ballots in Montana? Look, you know, as a, as a native person um, in, in the state, uh, being able to get the right to vote um, has always been a, been a, a fight um, for a lot of people. And, and unfortunately, I think, um, you know, the mail ballot doesn't really benefit me um, over Mr. Downing or anybody. I think getting people access to voting um, should be our number one uh, priority um, in the state. The more people that can vote, the more people that are voicing their opinions for the candidates. Um, and I don't think... Uh, this is nothing more than a tactic to try and uh, impact the vote because those voters don't vote for Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Trump or maybe not even Mr. Downing. Well, we have time for one last question. This will goes to uh, Mr. Morjo. Uh, we've talked about a lot of things and about the qualifications for both of you. I'm just wondering, uh, you know, when voters look at the two of you and your experience or just what you're proposing, why should voters choose you um, as, a, as the next state auditor uh, to do the job that, that, that that uh, you're tasked to do. What's the major difference between you and your opponent? Yeah, so, you know, I, I think I've proven um, myself in, in the work I've done already in the legislature. I've proven that I can put partisanship aside, that I can do what people expect of us in getting to work, to, to work on issues um, that are common sense um, in Montana. Um, I've shown that through my work on the child sex abuse legislation, um, that we can improve protections for victims of child sex abuse. That was bipartisan work that I worked on. I've worked on health insurance issues directly, air ambulance, um, reducing costs for, um, for individuals, um, people in my community I've talked to who've struggled with being able to afford those things. Um, I've worked on the reinsurance program, which directly resulted in rates being lowered um, this, this upcoming year. I've worked on uh, Medicaid expansion. I'm very proud of that because we've got around 100,000 people in the state insured. Um, so there's already things that I've done um, in the state to, to reduce costs. Um, but I do want to bring a package of bills forward. Um, the first uh, set of business is to use my experience to bring a set of bills forward for transparency to drive down costs across the state of Montana. Uh, Mr. Downing, what, what uh, are voters going to be looking at when they look at you? What's the main thing that differ differentiates you from your uh, opponent and, and, and would um, help them make a choice as to who's the best person for this office? 
Well, first of all, you know, I'm not a politician. I've never held public office before. I'm a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a combat veteran. I think that I've got a very strong service record uh, with entrepreneurs, with that youth, uh, uh, at-risk youth, with uh, uh, veterans. Uh, I've been very involved putting my, my time, my energy, uh, my money into these things. I think it's important that you have somebody that has practical experience, somebody that's run a business that understands what it's like to operate a business in a highly regulated industry. And I don't think we need more lobbyists, lawyers, and legislators running this office that have never actually been in this business. Thank you. Um, and now one last shot for both of you uh, to kind of make that pitch again. Uh, our closing statements, each person gets uh, 90 seconds. And the first closing statement goes to Mr. Morzo. Hey, thanks, Mike. And, and um, I want to thank our host for this opportunity. And I want to thank my opponent for being here. Um, I'm a proud Native Montanan. As a state legislator, I worked with Republicans and Democrats to make health care more affordable, to protect public lands, provide career opportunities for students, and to promote Montana small businesses. I'm a proud gun owner. I'm an avid outdoorsman. I grew up hunting and fishing right here in Montana. And I'll fight to protect our public lands and to preserve, preserve our outdoor heritage. I'm running for auditor because I believe Montana deserves an independent voice who's gonna put Montanans ahead of any political party. Montanans, I believe, have a clear choice in this election. And unlike my opponent, I have a clear record of working across the aisle to get things done for Montanans. They know that they, know that they can count on me and trust me to work hard and deliver for them. And unlike my opponent, I won't stand idly by as companies push predatory junk insurance plans on the hardworking Montana families. And lastly, unlike my opponent, I'm dedicated to serving Montanans, not my own political career. In four years, you won't find me self-funding a campaign for another office. I'd ask my opponent if he can say the same. These are unprecedented, unprecedented times, and Montanans, I believe, need someone they can depend on. I fought for Montanans my whole career, from the fire line to the legislature, and as a state auditor, we'll fight to defend Montanans with pre-existing conditions to keep healthcare costs down and defend individual businesses, individuals and businesses from fraud and predatory practices. And I wanna thank you, uh, Mike, and I hope I can count on your vote this November. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Marjo. And uh, now the closing statement from uh, Mr. Downing. Well, thank you, uh, Mike. Thank you, MTN. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, Shane, for being here. I really appreciate this, uh, this opportunity. You know, this campaign's been a lot about dialogue, dialogue with industry, with consumer protection groups, with uh, everybody that this office affects, you know, not just insurance companies, but, uh, you know, across the board and understanding where the pain points are, what needs to be fixed, what can be better, better how we can do things better for Montanans. And to the direct statement that, uh, that Shane made, uh, you know, I, I, I take a, a chapter, we had the saying in the Air Force, uh, service before self. This is about service. This is another opportunity to serve. And I think I've really proven that I have a strong track, track record of service. And I plan on continuing to serve Montanans. I'm running for this office because I'm excited about it. I'm excited because I have something to give. Because I've seen how bad actors can take advantage of the unsuspecting. I've seen the pitfalls in both the securities and in the insurance industry. I've also seen how a heavy handed regulatory environment can get in the way of businesses just doing business. And I think it's important that we have, uh, have businesses that are thriving because that's consumer advocacy. If we have a, a, a thriving competitive market where we make it easy for business to do business, we have more people competing, which gives better choices, more opportunity, better pricing. I think that is consumer advocacy. And I think that somebody coming into this office who's never been in business, who's never been involved in a regulated industry will have no idea where to even start. So I'm Troy Downing. I'd, I'd really appreciate to keep the dialogue going and I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, Shane. Thank you. I'd like to thank both of the candidates for joining us this morning on MTN. You've been listening to the debate for the candidates from State Auditor, Republican Troy Downing and Democrat Shane Morjo. I'm Mike Dennison for MTN. Please join me next week and we'll have a debate between the candidates running for Secretary of State. See you then.